Megan likes honey, but not jam. Alfie likes honey and jam. Chen does not like honey or jam. Donna only likes jam. Write the children's names in the correct parts of the sorting diagram. So first, let's look at Megan. She likes honey, so she'll be under this column here, because that's the column for likes honey. But she does not like jam, so she'll need to be in this row here. So we write Megan's name in this box, because that shows that if we go up, she likes honey, and if we go to the left, she does not like jam. Now, let's find where we can write Alfie. He likes honey and jam. So we can write Alfie here, because if we go up, that shows us that he likes honey, and if we go across, that shows us that he likes jam as well. Now, Chen does not like honey or jam. So Chen will need to be in this column for does not like honey, and in this column for does not like jam, so we can write Chen here, because he does not like honey, and does not like jam. And now Donna only likes jam, so Donna needs to be in the section or the row for likes jam, but she does not like honey, because if she only likes jam, she doesn't like anything else. So we have the children's names in the correct parts of the sorting diagram. Circle the number closest to 500. First, we have 525, so that's 25 more than 500. Now, 491 is 9 less. If we add 9 to 491, that will give us 500. Or, we could work out that 500 minus 491 is 9. 511 is 11 more. 408 is 92 less, because 8 and 92 make a number bond to 100, and if we have another 100, that would give us 5 hundreds altogether. Or, we could work out that 500 minus 408 is 92. And finally, 550 is 50 more than 500. So we need to circle the number closest. So that will be 491, because that's only 9 less than 500. And all of our other numbers are more than 9 less or more. So remember, the closest number could be a number that's smaller or a number that's larger. But 491 is the number with the smallest difference, so that's why it's the closest number to 500. Calculate 735 plus 2669. So we can set this out as a column addition, writing the number with the most digits, so the largest number on top, and lining up the numbers in the question on the right-hand side. 9 plus 5 is 14, so that's 1, 4. 1 plus 6 plus 3 is 10, so 1, 0. 1 plus 6 plus 7 is 14, so 1, 4. And 1 plus 2 is 3. So we have 3,404. These three square tiles have symmetrical patterns on them. Draw the line of symmetry on each tile. So remember, a line of symmetry is a line down the middle of a shape, so that you have the same reflected on both sides. So our line of symmetry is here, because we could fold one side over, so that it completely covered the other side with nothing overlapping. And for this shape, we have a horizontal line of symmetry, because again, if we folded one side over, it would completely cover the other side. Now for this shape here, we don't have a vertical or horizontal line of symmetry, but we do have a diagonal line of symmetry. 
We could fold one side over so that it completely covered the other side with nothing overlapping, so that's how we know that we have a line of symmetry. Liam hires a bike. He has to return it by 3pm. The time is 2.25pm. How many minutes has he got left? So we need to remember that there are 60 minutes in an hour, and 60 minus 25 is 35. So that means if we have 25 minutes, another 35 minutes will take us to 60 minutes, so take us to the next hour, which is 3pm. So that means he has 35 minutes left. In this diagram, the numbers in the triangles add together to make the number in the circle. The number in the square is 6 less than the number in the circle. So we can see that 10 plus 15 is 25, and 25 minus 6 is 19. And we need to write the four missing numbers in these diagrams. So we have 8 plus something is 32. So because we have a missing number addition, we can use subtraction to find our missing number. 32 minus 8 is 24, so that means 8 plus 24 is 32. And now to find 6 less than 32, we can work out 32 minus 6, so that's 26. Now here we have something plus 30 is something. So there are two numbers that we don't know. So instead, let's start here and think something minus 6 is 85. So 85 plus 6 is 91. So that means 91 minus 6 or 6 less than 91 is 85. So now we have something plus 30 is 91. So again, because it's a missing number, we can use the inverse and 91 minus 30 is 61. The numbers in this sequence increase by 30 each time. So we have 20, 50, 80, 110 and so on. The sequence continues in the same way. Which number in the sequence will be closest to 300? So the numbers are increasing by 30, and multiples of 30 are 30, 60, 90, 120, and so on. So notice, numbers in the sequence are always 10 less than a multiple of 30. Now we know that 300 will be a multiple of 30, because 30 times 10 is 300. So, the number in the sequence will be 10 less, so that will be 290. After 300, in the multiples of 30, we have 330. So, in the sequence, 10 less will be 320. But we want the number closest to 300, and 290 is closer than 320. So the closest number in the sequence is 290. Now what we could do is just keep on adding 30 each time, and then we would get to 290, and that's the closest number to 300. Write the missing numbers. First, 150 minus something equals 87. So we have a missing number subtraction, and because it's the second number that's missing, we still subtract to find our missing number, so we can work out 150 minus 87. We can't do 0 minus 7, so go to the left, 1 less, 1 in front, 10 minus 7 is 3, we can't do 4 minus 8, but 14 minus 8 is 6. So our missing number is 63. Now, 90 times something equals 450. So here, because we have a missing number multiplication, we can divide to find our missing number. 
So 450 divided by 90, we can cancel the end zero and then 45 divided by nine is five. So that means 90 times five is 450. And that makes sense because nine times five is 45. And then if we have an end zero in the question, we need an end zero in the answer. Six classes at Winwood Primary School collected some money. The chart shows how much money the boys and girls collected. In class four, how much more money did the girls collect than the boys? So we can find the bars for class four and we can see that girls are dark gray and boys are the light gray bar. So if we read across from the top of the girls bar, we can see that they collected 12 pounds and then the boys collected between four and six, so that's five pounds. Now we need to know how much more. So how much more is 12 pounds than five pounds? So what we can do is find the difference by subtracting five pounds from 12 pounds and that gives us seven pounds. So the girls collected seven pounds more. How many classes collected more than 30 pounds? So here, for each class, we need to work out the total of what the girls collected and what the boys collected and see if it's more than 30 pounds. So for class one, we can see that the girls collected 14 pounds and the boys 20 pounds. So altogether, that's 34 pounds. So more than 30 pounds. But for class two, we can see that both the girls and the boys collected 13 pounds and that only comes to 26. So it's not more than 30 pounds. For class three, the girls collected 18 pounds and the boys 14 pounds. So that comes to more than 30 pounds because 18 plus 14 is 32. Class four, we have 12 pounds for the girls and five pounds for the boys. So that's less than 30. For class five, we have 14 pounds and 17 pounds. So that's more than 30 pounds because that comes to 31 pounds. And then for class six, we have 18 and 17. So that makes 35, so more than 30. So how many classes do we have? We have one, two, three, four. So that means four classes collected more than 30 pounds. A shop sells pairs of socks. Kirsty buys one pair of knee socks and three pairs of ankle socks. She pays with a 20 pound note. How much change does she get? Well, first, let's work out how much she spends altogether. She buys one pair of knee socks. So one pair of knee socks is five pounds 45 and three pairs of ankle socks is seven pounds 50. So if we add those together, that gives us 12 pounds 95. To find how much change she gets, we can take what she pays with and subtract the value of what she's bought. And when we do that, remember 20 pounds, we can put 0 0.00 on the end and then we can use column subtraction and that gives us seven pounds five. So that's how much change she gets. Now, Amy spends £25.50 on trainer socks. How many pairs of trainer socks does she get? We're told that five pairs cost £8.50. So that means 10 pairs must cost £8.50 times two or £8.50 plus £8.50. And that gives us £17. Now to find 15 pairs, we can add what we got for five pairs to what we got for 10 pairs. And eight pounds 50 plus 17 pounds is 25 pounds 50. And that's how much she spent. So we know that she must have bought 15 pairs of trainer socks. Here is part of a number line. 
what is the value of x? So we need to work out what these little lines on our number line represent. Now we have 0 and 100 marked, and to get from 0 to 100, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 lines. So if we divide the difference, divide 100 by 4, that tells us that each line represents 25 more as we go up. So the value of x will be 25 more than 100, so that's 125. Now we need to find the value of y. So we can see that on the number line, y is below 0. So if we go back in 25s, from 0 we'll have minus 25, minus 50, and then minus 75 for point y. Measure the shortest side of this triangle in millimetres. So the shortest side will be this side at the bottom. So we can take our ruler and line it up so that we have 0 on the ruler at one end of the line. And then if we look at the other end, we can see that it's past 6 and then we have 7 of these little lines. So that's 6.7 centimetres. But we need to give our answer in millimetres. So we can change centimetres to millimetres by multiplying by 10. So that gives us 67 millimetres. You also get the mark for 66 millimetres or 68 millimetres. Here is a hexagon. Draw two straight lines across the hexagon to make two triangles and two quadrilaterals. So we know that a triangle is a shape with three sides and a quadrilateral is a shape with four sides because quad means four. So we can draw a straight line here and then a straight line here and we have two triangles, one here and one here and we also have two quadrilaterals, two shapes with four sides, one here and one here, though there are lots of different answers, different possible answers for this question. Calculate 16.72 times 5. So we can set this out as a short multiplication, but because we have a decimal point in the question, we need to copy that down into our answer. Now 2 times 5 is 10, so 1, 0. 7 times 5 is 35, plus 1 is 36, so 3, 6. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 3 is 33, so that's 3, 3. And 1 times 5 is 5, plus 3 is 8. So our answer is 83.60, but we don't need to write zeros on the end of decimals, so we could just write 83.6. Write the two missing digits. So something minus something equals 34. And because we have a missing digit subtraction, it's easier if we write this out as a column subtraction. So remember with column subtraction, we start by subtracting our ones digit. And we have one minus something, and we have four as the ones digit of our answer. But clearly, they haven't subtracted from 1 to get 4, because 4 is larger than 1. So what they must have done is exchange with the tens digit, and then put 1 in front. So subtracted from 11 to get 4. Now 11 minus 7 is 4, because 11 minus 4 is 7. So this missing digit here must be a 7. So now onto our tens we have something minus 2 is 3. Now 5 minus 2 is 3, because 3 plus 2 is 5. But what was this digit originally, before we exchanged? Well, when we exchange, it's always 1 less, 1 in front. So this digit must have been a 6, because 1 less is 5, and that means we can put 1 in front of our 1's digit. So that means the tens digit is a 6, and this missing 1's digit 
must be a 7. And then we can check 61 minus 27 is 34. Liam has 5 coins. 3 of the coins add up to 30p. 3 of the coins add up to 40p. All 5 coins add up to £1. What are the coins that Liam has? Well first, let's think, how can we have 3 coins that add up to 30p? We could have 3 10p's, because 10 plus 10 plus 10 makes 30. Or we could have something else. We could have 1 20p and 2 5p's. Now, let's think what 3 coins add up to 40p. Well here, it must be a 20p and 2 10p's, because that's the only way to get 40p. So already, we know what 3 of these numbers must be. One of them, at least, must be 20p, and 2 of them, at least, must be 10p. So, let's start with 50p, and then we can have 20p, 10p, 10p, and then, if we look at what we've got so far, we've got 50, plus 20 is 70, plus 10 is 80, plus 10 is 90, so we need another 10p to make sure it adds up to £1. Now, let's look at these numbers and see if they fit the rules that we've been given. We can see that three of the coins, these three coins here, add up to 30p, and we can see that these three coins here add up to 40p, so we have our answer. This chart shows the population of Cornwall from 1950 to 2010, so the population is how many people there are living there. In which year did the population first reach 400,000? So we have population here, and if we find 400,000, what we can do is draw a horizontal line across from that to where it meets the line of our line chart. Then we can draw a line straight down, because we have the year down here. Now we can see that it's right in the middle of 1970 and 1980, so the year must be 1975. You'd also get the mark for 1974 or 1976. Now, how much did the population increase from 1950 to 2000? So if it's asking what the increase is, it's asking how many more. So it's asking us to find the difference. If we look up from 1950, we can see that our line is halfway between 300,000 and 400,000. Then, if we look up from 2000, we can see that our line is on 500,000. So, halfway between 300,000 and 400,000 must be 350,000. So, we can work out 500,000 minus 350,000, because we want to know the increase, so we want to know the difference between these numbers. And when we find the difference, we subtract. So our answer is 150,000 people. Now an answer of between 130,000 and 180,000 gets you the mark. Now, what was the population of Cornwall in 2010? So here, we need to look up from 2010 and then we can draw a line across. We can see that our line is between 500,000 and 600,000, but this time the line is not right in the middle. I would say that it's closer to 500,000 than to 600,000. So here, a good estimate would be 525,000 people, because if we imag imagine a line right in the middle is going to be 550,000, it's definitely less than that, but definitely more than 500,000. So here, an answer of between 511,000 and 549,000 gets you the mark, 
because you have to recognize that the line is less than halfway up, so less than 550,000. Calculate 55% of 640. So a percentage is a fraction with a denominator of 100. And to find a fraction of a number, we can divide by the denominator and then multiply by the numerator. So here, first of all, we can work out 640 divided by 100. That's 6.4 because we can write a decimal point on the end of a whole number and then we can copy that down and to divide by 100 we can move the digits two squares to the right. That gives us 6.40 but we don't need zeros on the end of decimals so we have 6.4. But now we need to times top or multiply by 55. There's a decimal point in the question so we can copy that down into our answer. And now 4 times 5 is 20, so 2, 0. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 2 is 32. We can cross out our working, write a 0, and then 4 times 5 is 20, so 2, 0. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 2 is 32. And we can add up our answer lines and we get 352.0, which we can just write as 352, because if we have 0, .0, we have a whole number. This is Kirsty's recipe for breakfast cereal. 50 grams of oats, 30 grams of raisins, 40 grams of nuts. If she uses 125 grams of oats, how many grams of raisins does she need? So we know that in her recipe, she needs 50 grams of oats for 30 grams of raisins. So if we double the number of oats, 50 times 2 is 100, and 30 times 2 is 60. So for 100 grams of oats, she would need 60 grams of raisins. But we want to know how much she needs for 125 grams of oats. So we need another 25 grams. Now 25 is half of 50. If we divide 50 by 2, we get 25. So we can divide 30 by 2, and that tells us that for every 25 grams of oats, she needs 15 grams of raisins. So we know that with 100 grams of oats, she needs 60 of raisins, and for 25 grams of oats, she needs 15 grams of raisins. Now 100 plus 25 is 125, and that's the number of grams of oats that she needs. So we can work out the number of grams of raisins by adding 60 and 15, so she needs 75 grams of raisins. The other way of working this out is to first find half of 50, so find that 25 grams of oats is 15 grams of raisins, and then if you know 25 grams, you can multiply by 5 to get 125, and 15 times 5 is 75, so that tells us that she needs 75 grams of raisins. Here is a rectangle. Calculate the size of angles A and B. So the corners of a rectangle are always right angles, and angles on a right angle add up to 90 degrees. So that means 34 degrees plus angle A needs to make a total of 90. So if we subtract 34 from 90, we get 56. So angle A is 56 degrees. Now, to find angle B, we can remember that Z or backward Z angles on parallel lines are the same size. So because we know that this angle here is 34 degrees, angle B will be 34 degrees as well. 
So parallel lines, remember, are like train tracks. If we extended them, they would go on forever. And if we have parallel lines and a line crossing them, then we will have angles that are the same. We could also work this out in another way. Because if we know that A is 56, and we know that this angle here is 90, we know that there are 180 degrees in a triangle. So we could add 56 and 90, and then subtract from 180, and that would give us 34. Because 56 plus 90 plus 34 makes a total of 180. And that's how many degrees we have in a triangle. The difference between two numbers is two. When each number is rounded to the nearest hundred, the difference between them is 100. Write what the two numbers could be. So remember the difference is what we get when we subtract. And there are lots of possible answers for this question. So we could have 149 because rounded to the nearest 100, that rounds down to 100, because we have a 4 as our tens digit, so we're rounding down. And we could have 151. That rounds up to 200, because we have 5 tens. And if we have 5 or more, we round up. And 149 and 151 have a difference of 2, because 151 take away 149 is 2. We could also have 249 because that rounds down to 200 and 251 because that rounds up to 300. And again, our numbers have a difference of 2 before we round them and a difference of 100 after we round them. We could have 248 and 250. 248 rounds down because to round to the nearest hundred, we find our hundreds digit, look to the right, and if it's four or less, the hundreds digit stays the same. But 250 rounds up because if we find our hundreds digit and look to the right, we have a five, so we round up, which means the two in our hundreds turns into a three. So there are lots of possible solutions for this question. This shape is made of wooden centimetre cubes. How many more centimetre cubes are needed to make it into a solid cuboid 3 centimetres tall, 5 centimetres long and 5 centimetres wide? Well what we can do here is to think how many more cubes will we need on each row. So for our middle row we will need 16 cubes because we can see we have 4 by 4, so that's 16 cubes needed to fill up the middle row. And then on the top row, we will need another 22 cubes. We'll need 16 cubes above the 16 cubes that we put in our middle row, and then we have 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So if we have 22 plus 16, that means we need another 38 cubes altogether. Alfie says when you multiply two numbers together, the answer is always greater than either of the numbers you started with. Is Alfie correct? Explain how you know. So Alfie is wrong. And when the person is wrong, we can give an example to explain how we know. So if one of the numbers is 1, the answer will be the same as not greater than the other number. So for example, 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 is the same not greater than 3. If one of the numbers is 0, the answer will always be 0, no matter how large the other number is. So for example, 5 times 0 is 0, and 0 is smaller than 5. Or, if one of the numbers is less than 1, the answer will always be smaller than the other number. So for example, a half times 4 is 2, 
because finding a fraction of a number is the same as multiplying a fraction by a number. Or 5 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 is not larger than 5. A shop sells fruit. Chen buys two apples and three bananas. He pays £2.35. Megan buys two apples and one banana. She pays £1.25. How much does one banana cost? So we can see that Chen buys two more bananas than Megan and buys the same number of apples. So if we find the difference in what they pay, that will give us the cost of two bananas. So we can work out £2.35 minus £1.25. That's £1.10. So Chen pays £1.10 more and for that he gets two extra bananas. But we want to know the cost of one banana. Because we know the cost of two bananas, that's £1.10. To find the cost of one banana, we can divide £1.10 by two. To do that, we can use short division, and that gives us £0.55, so 55 pence as the cost of a banana.